Hi, this is Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live, number nine. And I am um, broadcasting from the beautiful state of Utah in the United States of America. It's a, a beautiful November day. And uh, we're fast approaching our holiday here in the United States called Thanksgiving. So it's really very exciting. Nice, uh, wonderful day with family and good food. So welcome, welcome to uh, this live broadcast. I'm going to talk about singing in a mix uh, or singing with a mix. And um, good, Sergey, thank you. You can hear me. Now, um, this is a question that uh, a lot of people well, this is a question I had myself. I remember when I first started this technique um, and started studying, found out about this technique. In fact, I'd never even heard of the word mix um, when I started this. And this was um, in the end of this this time of, it was in November of 1996. I attended a workshop uh, here in Utah and Seth Riggs was the presenter and um, I had never even heard of the phrase or the word mixed voice. And even when I started learning about it, I had a hard time understanding it. And it was very difficult for me. Be because I didn't know what I was supposed to be hearing. I didn't know what mix sounded like. I didn't know what it felt like in my voice. And so it was just a, a great mystery to me. So I want to kind of just talk about that today and then answer any questions that uh, you guys might have. So um, I, I'm, I'm tempted to show you the video that I did on mix because it's really quite, it's quite good. Um, and I don't know, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that you've, many of you uh, have, have seen this video. But let me just refer to it right now. Um, if I go to, I'm gonna bring this up on a separate screen and then I'll pull it in. Um, and uh, let me see if, if you're still able to hear me here. If I uh, bring this image into, now I think I can talk over it right now. Um, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to show you this video. I might cut it short, but it's going to get our discussion going. So please take a minute here and watch some of this uh, video on how to sing mix. And this is uh, also on my uh, Power to Sing website in the Knowledge Center. This is episode number 33. So um, here we go. How to sing mix or how to sing with a mix is a very common question. Inside this video, I'll define and demonstrate mix. Warning, normally I try to avoid this, but in this video, I get a little geeky about singing. I am Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing. How to sing in a mix? Well, what is a mix? A mix is a mixture or blend of at least two things. When singing, you're in a mix if you have a mixture of chest voice and head voice. If you sing only with chest voice, you have no mix. If you start in chest and sing higher and break or flip into falsetto, you have no mix. Because you've lost the connection to your chest voice. If, when singing, you bring falsetto down into the area of the chest voice that is supposed to be chest, there is no mix. It's only falsetto. A mix can only exist if the vocal cords remain connected. If your vocal cords break into falsetto 
and you do not reconnect, you have no mix. It's only falsetto. Ah. Mix is made with connected vocal cords and a blend of chest resonance and head resonance. Now where is mix in the voice? There are several schools of thought about when and where you're in mix. Some define mix as only occurring in the vocal bridges, the passaggi, passaggi. When singing in chest voice, as you sing higher, and while keeping the vocal cords together, the resonance begins to move higher from your chest into your head cavities. The resonance splits, so there is a mixture of, or a mix of both chest and head resonance. This split occurs in the bridge or passaggio. After getting through the first bridge, the singer encounters a second bridge and then a third bridge. For women, there are even more bridges. With each bridge, there is a blend of overtones from the register below and the register above. Lower overtones damping or dropping out and higher overtones coming in. As a result of this process, many believe that mix is only occurring in the actual bridges. Some believe if the vocal cords remain connected while the resonance has split into both chest and head cavities, that mix is always present, both in... Okay, so let's stop for a minute here. I think this is probably enough. Uh, let me bring this back. All right. Um, okay, so... I like this because there were some visuals here, but let me let me demonstrate for you again. If if I am in um, a if I'm in my chest voice, which is at the bottom of the register, um, let me bring up the questions and answers again. Okay. Um, Yeah, so uh, the video may not be really helpful if we watch the whole thing, but at least to get this conversation started. If I'm in the low, in my chest voice down here, uh, what's happening here is the there is um, the vocal cords are here, and they're vibrating, and they're creating a sound wave that is going up. So as it goes up, the sound wave goes up. It hits. Um, it depends on what the note, where the note is. But in the in the chest voice, it hits my hard palate. It hits the roof of my mouth. <laughs> now, if I keep pulling my chest voice higher and do not go into mix, it keeps hitting the hard palate, and it really starts to like shake your your ears and your body and it also starts to feel stressful. So chord structure is creating a sound wave. That sound, or you call it a sound beam. The beam is going up and hitting the hard palate. Uh, roof of your mouth. Uh, now, um, that's chest voice and it's chest voice being pulled higher. If I don't allow the resonance or that, that sound beam to shift up into up above the roof of my mouth and up into my head, then it gets harder and harder. Um, and then it's going to crack uh, while you know it's going to do that or it's going to just flip, completely break. And that's falsetto. So you, there's no mix there. Uh, it, I've gone from chest, pulling my chest voice up, ah, into falsetto. The vocal cords have split apart, and now they're just barely touching, and lots of air is coming through, and that's falsetto. It's not mixed because I've been, I've cut the, I've cut my voice off. Uh, from the bottom. There's no longer any um, chest presence. There's not chest resonance. The vocal cords have actually popped apart 
And in that condition, if I start, if I try and come back down and get back into chest, I have to reconnect the vocal cords and you get like another break going back down in. That Those things are not mix. Uh, it's not mixed to pull the chest voice higher. It's just pulled up chest voice. And so, and it's awful sound and the vowel spreads, the mouth spreads, there's tension in the neck. And so that's your pulled chest. So what happens then with the mixed voice is you've got this, um, you've got this resonance and you've got this sound beam being generated by created by the uh, vocal cords and they have to the, that sound beam has to move off of the hard palate uh, and so if, the, if this is the hard palate this is coming up hits the hard palate this is going to have to go further and further back until it hits the soft palate so that the sound can generate through that soft palate and it and then it goes up and around. Now, in head voice, it goes up all the way. And so there's, now when it hits the hard palate, when it starts to hit the soft palate, there's a split resonance. Now there's some still chest voice hitting, and then there's this other element of resonance that's going up into the, into the head voice. So let me demonstrate that. <coughs> I'm starting at the G, and ladies, this is exactly the same for you. There is a split in, in the vibration. There's a split in the resonance. And so your split begins, or that, and this is where the bridge begins. The ladies begin at the A above middle C. For the men, it begins at the E above middle C. So I'm going to start on my chest voice, and I'm going to illustrate what it sounds like then to have the split in resonance. Now, <clears throat> some of the resonance has now moved to the soft palate, and so it's, it's beginning to go back a little ways and hit the softer part of the roof of my mouth. Not the hard palate anymore, but the soft palate. Now, I'm in the key of G, so that's the F sharp. But let's just say, I, let me, for the purpose of not skipping any notes, it's middle C. Oh, that's the E. And there start to be a split. Oh, now I'm on the F, and if you want to give it a measurement, you could say that maybe there's 50%, 50% on on the uh, uh, soft palate, and now there's 50% moved past the soft palate and sh shifting completely up into head. So you, but I still have, correction, there's 50% now that's on the soft palate and, and further back, and still about 50% on the hard palate. So I've got a split resonance. I've got both chest resonance and head resonance going at the same time, and it's about a 50-50. C, D, o, e. beginning of the split. O, now there's about 50-50, chest and, and uh, if you want to call it head, you know, it's going up into the head of the nasopharynx, generating through the soft palate and, and around the soft palate up into the nasopharynx, which is the cavity above the mouth above the mouth oh, uh, F sharp oh, now it's maybe three quarters all the way into head oh, and that's the G which now I believe there is element of chess there because I'm still connected I haven't gone into falsetto but fundamentally I'm essentially in my head voice <clears throat> There's the F again, oh, the E, and I'm not going to allow it go, to go just down into my mouth. If I did, well, let me show you. Oh, ah. 
that's not very elegant, is it? So I'm going to bring some of that. I'm going to bring some of that down with me. Some of that mix. I'm going to overlap it where chess would normally be. Oh, uh, nope. So I brought the mix down, kind of smooths things out. Okay. You got that? All right. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> no. It's so, it's, it's exciting to be able to show that to you. But let me tell you, that took quite a while to even figure out what it feels like to be able to show it to you, to be able to explain it. And so I'm, ho I'm hoping that this helps. Now, let me just take a look at some of your, I've got your questions here on a monitor next to me. Um, okay, let me just, t excuse me while I read through some of these things. Um, I'm gonna have to pull this down because I'm missing something here. Okay, you're hearing me fine, all good. Um, so Christina, my thought was if, if someone had never seen the video before that I would show part of it so that we kind of start the discussion. But you're right, this is an episode 33, go watch the whole thing. Um, I had wondered before how mix feels if it sounded differently inside my head than chest. Um, let, me, let me explain that um, it does sound differently. And the reason, to us, it sounds differently to us as a singer. And here's the reason why. When that sound beam is coming up and it hits the hard palate, the roof of your mouth, it feels and sounds like this to us. Now, when that sound beam comes, and you're, just because you're hitting bone, you're hitting just skin and then bone behind that, and it just creates this strong, intense feeling. But when that sound beam begins to angle back a little ways and and hit the soft palate, it fe it sounds like this to us. <laughs> and the difference between the two is striking, in our ear and our in the way we, it feels. And so a lot of singers, they, th they think that that's what the listener is hearing. But just because it feels like this to us singers, that doesn't mean that it sounds that way to the listener. So if you're singing mix and you feel this, that's not what I'm hearing as a listener. I'm hearing a very bright, strong, vibrant sound. Uh, but inside us, we're feeling something so different that we don't trust it. And so we just... Instead, we just pull the chest voice up, which means the resonance stays in the mouth, hits the hard palate, and kind of splats. So it definitely does feel different, and you have to get used to it. There's another, and also this feeling of split resonance. It's a different feeling than and uh, we have to get used, we have to learn to live with this feeling of split resonance. It's a new sensation. Um, there was a comment on, I was confused before and did not realize that I actually flipped it, it, to a version of falsetto. I thought it was in a mix. Um, yeah, it's, it's all very confusing at first. Um, So you can ask any question here at all. Um, anything you want to ask. I know this is a topic about mix, but I can address other things first. Let me just check some of these other questions. Um, but it, you're, you, Christina, thank you. It is more, <laughs> thank you, Christina, kind of moderating our discussion today. Um, but yes, if we can, if we can stay on mix, because this is really, you know, once you get this area down in your voice, the the chest and the head voices seem to uh, dial in faster. There's, your voice seems to come together faster. 
uh, as a result of getting your mix down, which is a fascinating phenomena. It's, it's really quite amazing. Um, Sergey Kent asks, can falsetto sound pretty powerful, kind of like mix, so that it's hard to distinguish between these two? At least it feels like that sometimes for me. For us guys, well, I think it's true. Yes, it is true. It, it, but I don't think uh, falsetto necessarily confuses us about mix. Falsetto confuses us more about head voice. Head voice and falsetto are not the same thing. Um, falsetto is the, the vocal cords have separated and head voice, the vocal cords have remained adducted or connected. Um, in, mix, in, the, in the register on mix, let's just say I'm singing falsetto here. That's the E above middle C. I don't have too much trouble hearing that that's not mix. I do have trouble hearing whether that's mix or falsetto. I did mix and I did falsetto on those two and it's very difficult to hear the difference, even for us guys at first. Now I've come to understand what falsetto really feels like inside my, in, you know, in my, in my body. So I can, I can pick that up a little bit faster now. I know when I'm in falsetto. But here's the problem. Falsetto and head voice both resonate up in the head and, and also often sounds to the listener and even to our own external ear very similar. The difference is the condition of the chord structure. One is connected and one has separate, one is disconnected. So I don't struggle with uh, what mix feels like in the bridge. I struggle, or, or and, and most of my, you know, mo many of my students don't either, but uh, because falsetto, if you're ever in question, take it down and see if you can blend into chest. <laughs> <laughs> It won't blend into your chest voice. Uh, this is from Christina. Oh, I do want to say that falsetto can sound quite powerful. I can be very powerful in falsetto, but not. I can't be powerful in the bridge, or in other words, where mix begins. Um, I can't be very false, uh, very powerful there. Oh, oh. <coughs> It's really hard for me to press in and get any power when it gets lower. I get more power up in the head register in those notes in falsetto, um, but not still not as powerful as true head voice. Because I can press into that, and you can hear I get more substance, more vo more chord structures. The whole you know the whole body of the chords are kicking in rather than just the falsetto, which is just like the top of the chords. If these are the chords, the falsetto is just up here. Um, Christina asks, uh, you said in another video before that helped too, that you have to bring down and thin out your chest voice to be able to use mix to sing over the break. Yes, this is a, a, good, a good point. When we're first learning to get into the get through this bridge, get through and into your mix, it really is very challenging to sing full voice. <laughs> when you're when you're first starting, it creates this big step, this big this big hurdle. So I would I'm, and I'm always recommending when you're first learning how. <laughs> The, the step from, from chest to head is so much smaller, so much less of an obstacle if you'll bring that volume down. Plus there's so much less tension. And it just allows the vocal cords to do their job. That is to make an adjustment so that we can go through, the, through this area. E, F, F sharp for the guys. B, B flat. Sorry, A, B flat, B, and C for the female voice. So bring the volume down, 
that reduces tension and just it's just easier to make the transition especially at first um, Yes, and then if I can get into my, find my mixed voice, uh, there's a comment about overlapping the mix with pure, with pure, with the chest. Um, first of all, you have to know how to get into your mix, and then you can bring mix down. As I demonstrated a second ago, and I guess, Christine, that's what you're commenting on. <laughs> Rather than just slamming back into chest. Sorry. That's on the D. I just went full back into chest rather than bringing mix down and overlapping that uh, over the top of chest. Um, let me see. The mouth thing was cool. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck, for explaining the difference between how it feels. That confirmed what I experienced. You are welcome, Christina. Um, yes, I don't know how to pronounce your name, and it looks like it's written in something like Russian or um, in Ukraine. You can probably help me clarify that. Sorry. Can you explain how to do nay nay exercise? Should I use my chest? Yes, I, I will. Let me explain that. Um, uh, Sergey, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Sergey, the explanation about the angles is helpful. Yeah, you know, um, I suppose you could say that a sound beam coming from the vocal folds is somewhat of a, of a um, kind of just a way of thinking about it because I'm, I'm more or less, I more or less feel like the sound resonance is coming from the vocal folds is more of a, a like a flashlight. So it's not like a laser beam coming up. But still, the concept is very helpful uh, so that this beam hits the soft palate and then starts to shift back and go uh, hit the soft, sorry, hits the hard palate in chest, shifts backwards, hits the soft palate, and then further back to get up into head. And so that's really a very helpful um, way to look at it. And it's, there, you, can feel, you can feel your voice doing that. Uh, as you get more tuned into this. Um, let me address some more questions here. Well, let me, let me go back now to the question. Um, nay, nay, nay produces a lot of tension. It can. Let me show you another way. Let me show you two different ways of doing nay, nay, nay. Now, the nay, nay, nays are great ways to get through the bridge, especially for the first time, especially in some voices. And um, you know, if you're a, 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 the teen boy, a teenage boy, sometimes this is the only way they can get through the bridge. Um, the other great way, of course, is the dopey sound, dopey gee or dopey goo. Now, this is evolving, this, this this concept because when I first started years ago uh, and when it, really when I first started teaching if I were teaching someone to do nay 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 and let's say we're gonna go through the bridge I'll start on the G again well ladies let me just say let me just uh, I'll do on a, a, a middle C to high C so that this is in your register if I said I used to teach and I saw this taught a lot Nay, 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 nay. That's a lot of tension. Uh, it enables me to thin the vocal folds, and I just hit the high C. Um, so there are some benefits to it, but it does introduce a lot of tension, and you have to back off of that for, for this to get useful. So I want you to try this. You st just want to say, nay, nay, nay. That's kind of a light. Uh, almost a light chest voice. Nay, 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 nay. It's still kind of bratty, witchy. Nay, 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 nay. 
But notice how much less tension that is. So much less tension. Nay, 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 nay. <clears throat> Got a little bit of hoarseness today. Nay, 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 nay. There's very little stress, very little tension in that. And I think, frankly, the larynx is not as, is not as high when I do that. D, uh, the C sharp. Nay, nay. So it's easier if you can, and there's less tension. If I come down here now for a word, let's guide where our first bridge is. Nay, 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 But there's not a lot of tension that nay 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 So that's another way to develop the connection using the bratty nay, the witchy nay. Nay 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 nay. It's not normal sounding. Um but that little witchy bratty sound is gonna thin the chord structure, take the weight of the chest voice out, and allow you to get through your bridge. Nay 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 for the guys, for the girls. That that sound is lighter than chest, but deeper than falsetto. It's not disconnected. It's a connected, uh, it's a connected head voice that we're able to, or uh, in, or mix, we're able to do with that little bratty coordination. Okay, and I hope that helps because that's a that's a great question, and this is something that um, that is um, becoming quite powerful. I'm seeing a lot of really great results from this. Alexandra, thank you, thank you, Christina. My apologies, Alexandra. I didn't know how to pronounce your or read your name. Is it is it Russian or uh, what is it? I'm just curious. Um, okay, another question. Dear Chuck, I do mix exercises every day, especially the ones desi des designed for the high larynx and flip falsetto. Is there optimum time for daily practice? Because I may exercise too much. How much per day? You know, this is a question that uh, I've, I've found. Um, I don't know that there's a standard answer for. But let's say you're a performer and your, your gigs last an hour. Then you probably want to practice an hour. Uh, maybe your gigs last two hours, or you know maybe it's just an hour uh, set, and then you you get a 20 minute rest or something, and then you come back and do another. I think if you practiced as long as you have to sing uh, at one in one block of time, I don't think if you're if you've got two sets with 20 minutes in between, and then you and you sing those in you know an hour here and an hour here, you don't necessarily need to practice two hours, but you probably need to practice as long as you're your block of performance is. Um, I do musical theater, and so my practice sessions are not that long. I typically will practice about 30 minutes, and I'm not saying that's ideal for everyone, but I'll practice exercises for 15 to 20 minutes. And if I'm just, if I'm not in a show, if I'm just working on a song or I, I wanna sing, then I'll spend at least 10 to 15 minutes on the song. <clears throat> so, it, it's, it varies from person to person. I think you can overdo it. I think you can sing and practice too much. It's more important that you do consistently every day. Even if you just did 15 to 20 minutes a day, you're going to keep your voice much better shape than if you do two hours on Monday and then, you know, two hours on Friday. So, um, I hope that helps. It's kind of what you have to find, you know, what's best for you. Um,
Arif, does that A R E F? Arif, does that answer your question? Let me just make sure. Um, the loud nay 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 was cool. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> yes, you are welcome, Alexandra. Uh, I have a another question here. I have done some humming exercises to ease vocal break for some days. Now I kind of start to feel a discomfort in my vocal cords. What should I do? Don't do it as hard. Um, it, it, you know, if if I were doing something to ease the vocal break, I would probably do um, this kind of exercise, um, and I do it nice and easy. But I would say, um, and I don't know if text tech is male or female it doesn't matter but if you're male I would start around the B below low C uh, and you could just say um, it's kind of using this little cry and you want to try not to fire these muscles underneath your chin so you put your thumb here and then as soon as you're able to do that again if you swallow you can feel that your thumb push you pushed out by the digastric muscle which is one of the muscles that is under here and attaches to the top of the hyoid cartilage and it pulls it up and so we don't want to fire that so we're going to try and isolate just the vocal folds vocal cords and after you do that staccato, you can try it on a little gallop. And uh, I have to do that soft, but if I do that soft, then I don't, I'm not, I'm not using that muscle below my chin, and I'm not pulling up the larynx. And then go to the triplet. Now that exercise was designed to take away the external muscles that pull the larynx up and causes the break. Um, could you? You're you're welcome, Arif. Uh, could you touch on styles, for example, R and B, sweet, uh, sounding mix, rock indie, strong mix. So a sweet mix versus. Can you touch on this on styles, for example? Um, it's exactly the same coordination. But it's different because there's different words and different intensity of music and different emotions and different feel. So um, it's really interesting to and R and B sweet. Uh, if you if you watch like Jennifer Hudson sing uh, uh, "Over the Rainbow" uh, in her tribute to Patti LaBelle, oh my gosh, she's just ripping that uh, that high, that really high R and B, real bratty. Over the rainbow. I mean, <laughs> I mean to tell you, it's just like wow. Um, now, uh, and so I've I've seen R I've seen R and B not be quite so sweet. It was very very strong. Um, oh, I, okay. So. You're really referring. Uh, I see the better now. The question: sounding mix versus rock indie strong mix. Well, um, I'm not the most qualified to answer this question because I don't do a lot of rock or indie, um, and I don't do a lot of R&B. Frankly, I do mainly musical theater. My students do some of these, and so if I said. Uh, let me just demonstrate some different sounding mix. <laughs> now it depends on how hard I I press in, how uh, light I am. Um, 
that's all mix. I mean, that's just light mix. And so I guess uh, a little bit stronger could be. Now, if if I'm doing uh, if I'm doing rock or uh, indie, um, a lot of times it's really not mixed. They're just pulling their chest voice. But if they're doing mix really well, and I think like Freddie Mercury is, I think he's a great singer. He might get a little pull, pull uh, chest once in a while. But I don't really sing. Uh, well, there may be a few times that he's really pulling hard. But um, <coughs> sorry. You know, it's it's. I'm not doing anything different. I'm just leaning harder on it, and uh, maybe there may be a little less uh, air going through. Um, I, it's, it's louder. It's it's stronger volume. And so, as far as the vocal folds are concerned, there's just more compression on the chord structure. Uh, but that takes some time to find that balance. And I'm, I don't, I'm not saying I'm perfect on that. But uh, fundamentally, you don't really change anything about how you're, you know, how the vocal f chords are working. But you add the emotion. You you might add volume. You might add some some lean down into it. Maybe. Uh, a more a little more compression still friendly compression a little more compression and that's going to give you more intensity <clears throat> but um i think what drives it and this is you know i've talked with i've heard seth riggs talk about this what really drives this is the emotion of the song the words the the genre itself the you know the music and that's what really makes the difference from genre to genre not necessarily that i'm doing that much difference with the vocal folds um, I do have a question for Raji. If I uh, I fall into the category of low chest, light chest, no chest, how much longer a day do we have to practice to get desired outcome? Please help me. All right. <clears throat> this is more of a, I think, oftentimes I find people with light chest, no chest uh, is a habit more than anything. And... Um, I have a student who is a 17-year-old male right now that comes to my that's physically here in my area comes to my studio and he talks like this and this is kind of how he talks and he realizes that he he talks kind of breathy and that's his I don't know it's something you know it's his vocal folds his vocal cords or light or, or something but you know he tends to talk like this now I can get him to get his vocal cords together and uh, and to speak a little more firmly but uh, that's that's really what has to happen. It's um, it's not even even really about how long you have to practice. You just have to say ah 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 instead of ah 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 a a a na 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 rather than na na na. And so you've got to monitor yourself. So 10 minutes a day of, of perfect practice will have a huge impact on your, on your progress rather than an hour a day of singing without the vocal cords coming together. The chord structure has to be coming together firmly. They have to be adducted. Ah, ah, ah. Nay, 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 nay. Too, too often. I see this happening. They say, ah, 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 nay, nay, nay. Don't change it. Ah, 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 nay, 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 And practice practice them all being the same, no matter where you're at on the scale. It's an easy answer. It's a harder quite it's a harder thing to do, and it's it's a challenge. You've got to really work on it. Um for a while, I did not even know why SLS is called speech level singing, and that means that, uh, and that it means that you keep volume and effort the same singing as you do when you talk. Yes, and one other thing, uh, Christina, uh, I'm speaking right now. I'm I'm speaking right now, and so my larynx is at speech level. 
if if I go off level, if the larynx, if when I'm singing, well, I can even speak with my voice going, my my larynx coming up. And so pretty soon I'm talking like this. And I actually have heard people do that before. The larynx is high. <clears throat> Uh, also, we don't want to. We don't talk like this. I don't drive my larynx down, so uh, this wouldn't be speech level. I might use it in a, a practice to to train my larynx to stay down or train those muscles below, but uh, that's not speech level either, is it? So, where we're speaking means, and you're right. There's the same tension. Uh, you know, volume is interesting because in in singing we do have to alternate volume. We do have to sing sometimes very softly or sometimes with more uh, loudness. But um, there's still, the larynx still should be where it, it should rest where we speak. And so Seth Riggs's reference to speech level is more often not uh, relating to, uh, is identifying the position of the larynx. It's at speech level. So the position of the larynx is really uh, a really important thing. That implies that the larynx is at rest, and so therefore the cord structure is at rest. If the larynx is rising, then there's a squeeze that starts to come in on the on the vocal folds, and the vocal rather the vo well the vocal cords or folds. I use that interchangeably. Usually I say cords. I don't know why I'm saying folds so much. Anyway, <clears throat> so if the larynx is going up, you're going in the swallowing mode. It just it just you know. Try making a sound while you while you try hum. Try to hum when you swallow. Mm, you can't. It just the larynx goes up and everything shuts off. The epiglottis comes over the top, and uh, you just can't do it. All right. So we have been going now for an hour and twenty minutes, and I think probably it's time to. Um, uh, probably to call it uh, a day. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, these have been great questions. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, singing in a mix takes some time. It takes. It's a new coordination, and I refer to this all the time. It's like ride, learning to ride a bicycle for the first time, or anything brand new. It just takes time to find the balance. It takes time to find uh, the... Uh, to begin to identify what it feels like, what correct feels like, and what incorrect feels like. Um, Alexandra said, uh, what should I do if when I go higher in nay, 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 and break? Well, good question. You have to do it, uh, you have to do that nay, 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 just firm enough, just firm enough to keep the connection. But sometimes, um, so you have to experiment with that. But if I said, nay, 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 and I didn't connect because of maybe I, you know, whatever reason, I mean, I'm a 17 year old male that just sometimes they have to do it harder. Nay, 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 nay. Now, so Alexander, I, I would also try to, to add to it my low breath. And so let me stand up and show you again. So this is my tummy in. I take air in, tummy comes out, and then I pull it in as I'm using the air while I'm doing that. Nay, 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 nay. So I can pull that in, and I don't want to jerk it in. I just want to pull it in gradually and help give myself a little bit of support a lot, to, to send air more uh, steadily and maybe a little more firmly so that it's against the cord structure and I'm getting a better compression there with, um, with, with the help of my breathing. If, if you have trouble finding that, I have a video, I think it's like number 16 or 17 or 15 on breathing. There's a couple of them there, but you can do this. So, Alexander, you might try this. Nay, 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 nay. I would bend at the waist, be all the way over, 
like 90 degrees, so you, and I would look at the floor while I do that. Nay, 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 nay. Oftentimes, that will connect it. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, all right. It's possible, Christina, that there is too much chest in it. So that's why it's really, really important to get that little nay, 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 If I'm saying nay, 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 nay. So here's another tip, Alexandra. Make sure that you're singing, you can, you're spelling the word N-E-Y and it's nay, nay, nay. It's not nay, nay, nay. So in the word nay, there's an E sound. Nay, nay, nay. In fact, you can try it. Go quickly to the E. Sometimes moving quickly to the E part of nay makes it even easier as well. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, all the best. We'll do this again next week. And uh, thank you for joining me. This is Chuck Gilmore with power to sing live, um, singing in a mix. Uh, thanks for joining me today and have a great week. Bye-bye.